Hello, everyone. Welcome. This is Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, episode 415. Today, we're talking about balancing martial arts with your career. My name is Jeremy Lesniak, your host for the show, the founder at Whistlekick, and a guy who loves the martial arts. And that's why we do the show. We do the show twice a week. On Mondays, I bring you an interview with someone. On Thursdays, we bring you a topic. And sometimes, like today, you get a little bit of both. If you want to check out everything that we've got going on, you can head on over to whistlekick.com. You can see all the projects that we're involved in and the products that we make. If you use the code PODCAST15, you can save 15% on everything we've got going on over there. If you head on over to whistlekickmartialartsradio.com, however, you will see the show notes, you will see photos, you will see transcripts, you'll see links, and you'll see 414 other episodes that we've made over the last four years. Today, I'm bringing you an interview, but it's an interview on a subject. We do this once in a while, but today, that conversation comes out of an email. In fact, I received an email from today's guest, Mr. Raymond Audie, and he was asking me a question. And I said, you know, let's do this as a show. What do you think? And he said, sure, let's do it. And so that's what we've got today. Today, we're talking about being a martial artist and trying to advance in your career. Because let's face it, sometimes the two conflict. So here we go. Let's do it. Mr. Audie, welcome to Whistlecake Martial Arts Radio. Pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to Glad have you. Glad we're able to do this. Yeah, me too. So I'll, I'll let the audience know, obviously, both you and I know that internet problems affected us last week and, mm-hmm. and almost had to reschedule today because I've been, I've been sick and, and oh, hopefully I, I'm, I'm kind of willing myself to be well for the next 45 minutes, hour, however long we're going to talk. And I'm mm-hmm. probably going to pass out immediately after. <laughs> <laughs> well, that sounds like a that sounds like a good plan. Make sure you're just doing a lot of fluids yeah. and all that. Yeah. Well, I I think I timed it just well enough that that I'm the appropriate amount of hi- being hydrated without having the need to press pause in the middle of this conversation for obvious reasons that ah, we won't okay. go into. Right? <laughs> but I'm excited to yeah, have yeah, you yeah. here. And audience, I, I want I want you to know that Mr. Audi is being very generous because we're testing out kind of this new format. Anybody who watches First Cup or follows a lot of what we do with Whistlekick knows I love answering questions. And I get questions in email almost every day, people wanting my advice or or you know, just kind of wanting to see what I think about a particular situation. Usually it involves martial arts. But I've kind of been toying with the idea, what would it look like if we had kind of this more long form Q&A as part of the show? And so you were unsuspecting and emailed me a question. And I said, aha, I would like you to be my guinea pig. Will you come on the show and ask me this question so we can talk about it so the listeners would have the benefit. So I, I want to thank you for your bravery or trust in me, whichever the two it is. And uh, well, it's not a problem. <laughs> well, thank you. So could you, uh, of course, I know your question already, but would you be willing to kind of sum it up to repeat your question for the audience? So the question I posed to you is more or less trying to reconcile your training with your career. Mm. And we can break that down a little bit more here in a minute. But that's the that's the meat and potatoes yeah. of the question. Yeah, and of course, anybody who trains and has a job has probably had some experience with the two bumping into each other. Whether that's, you know, maybe you're someone who enjoys competing on the weekends, and that means you're choosing between competition and quite often professional advancement. You know, a lot of that professional development, those seminars, things like that happen on weekends, so they don't interfere with work. Well, that's when competitions are too, or quite often rank testing or, or anything like that. And you've got to make a choice. And it's a difficult choice, isn't Absolutely. it? A- Absolutely, it is. Because you have on the one hand, you have your, your martial arts development and growth. And then on the other, you're trying to grow in your company or wherever you work to try and ideally have the livelihood to continue training. Right. Right. And still remain financially comfortable and all that. Yeah. And there's the catch 22 is that if you find a way to advance in your career more, it usually leads to 
more money, more flexibility in the time that you have. Not always, but often. And that can give you more opportunity for training, for traveling to train or compete or whatever is important to you about martial arts. If you advance in your career, you probably have more availability to advance in your martial arts career. Oh, uh, it, it can happen that sometimes. And then uh, I've also come to notice in certain companies, like the company I'm with, um, I, I don't really want to say the name because I don't oh, I know, know if right. we're allowed to, but um, when the higher up you go, actually the less personal time you seem to have. Mm. And that I've seen people who are supervisors and higher up who they've it's supposed to be their day off and they get called in and told, Hey, we need you to work. Right. And they don't really, they don't really have the option to do otherwise as compared to just a regular level worker. You have the ability to, they can call you up and say, Hey, we need you to work today. And you could be like, can't do it. Got something planned. Right. Right. Now, this was the thrust of what you had asked me was how, how do you balance that? I mean, that wasn't the word you mm-hmm. used, but I, I think that's a good word. Is, am, I, am I? Yeah. Balancing it is a good, I mean, we're martial artists. We, we are attempting to find a good balance in all things. <laughs> yes. Spiritual, physical, all that. So I believe balance is the most apropos word okay. to use. Now, part of the reason, audience, that I wanted Mr. Audi to come on and talk to me about this is that I haven't had a whole lot of experience having to balance this. Many of you know that I've been an entrepreneur since even before I graduated college. I was, I've been able to balance my life with martial arts and non-martial arts things pretty much from the get-go. I did have one six-month stint where I worked for Staples as I was growing my IT company. And I was full-time. and. I was very fortunate that my supervisor understood the importance of martial arts to me and made sure that I had time off to train. And this was also, this overlapped the period of time where I had my own school. So I let them know that, hey, yes, I need these days and these times off. It's it's non-negotiable. And if you want to make me work weekends to get, you know, to, to make that happen, I'll do it. And guess what I did? I did work weekends usually. Yeah. So tell me, tell me a bit about what your personal situation looks like as you're trying to balance martial arts in your career. So currently, the position I'm in, uh, my schedule, I, I'm very fortunate at the moment that my my hourly schedule, like my shift, is set. So I know what time I got to come in. I know what time I go home. the The other side of that coin is though my days off are all over the map. I could have a Monday, Tuesday off one week, and then the next week I won't be off till Wednesday, Thursday. It makes it kind of difficult. I have to let them know well in advance for, like you said, belt testing or competition, things like that, and then hope and pray that I actually get the time off approved. So there becomes one of the little issues that you could you run into working in the professional world and trying to maintain your your training your and keeping up with your advancement not only like i said with your career but with your martial arts right so it sounds like just with the job that you have with very little flexibility in when you're going to work when when your days off are which of course lead to when you're able to train Mm -hmm. you kind of have to sprinkle martial arts martial arts in when your career is making it available am i am i understanding that right yeah it's 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 more or less yeah you have to try i'm having to try to as you had the opposite issue you were trying to, it seems like, wedge work in between your martial arts. I'm having to try and wedge my martial arts mm. into my work. And there was a period of time where uh, when I was, I was working overnight for the past almost year, uh, a little over a year, on my lunch break at like 
twelve thirty a.m. I would eat, and then I would find a em- big empty place at my job, and I would practice my because I'm a Taekwondo practitioner. I would practice my uh, my tools or my patterns, and so I was having to, like you said, kind of sprinkle my martial arts into my work. Mm. Yeah. Now, I, I think it bears mentioning that you know this isn't a huge issue for a lot of people because a lot of people work you know, eight to four, nine to five, some kind of more, let's call it conventional work hours, mm-hmm. but that's not you. And so that's part of why well, it is me now. Okay. It is me now. It wasn't until like about three weeks ago was when I went back to what you would consider conventional hours. I work from fairly early in the morning, 5 a.m. to two in the afternoon. And so that's been a little bit more, um, what's the word I could use? Uh, It it, it seems to allow my martial Mm. arts a little bit more leniency and a little gives me back some of my time with the martial arts. But as you were saying, when I was working the more unconventional hours, it's, it is very difficult because especially if you work overnight and any of your listeners who have had to do overnight shifts, they understand that you sleep for a good chunk of the day. Yeah. So you, and then you have to get up uh, it later in the day, make it to a martial arts class, make it to a seminar or something, come home and then go and do your job that night and hope you're not too tired or beat down or anything to perform your job properly. Right. And any, anybody that's worked overnight, third shift, you know, that kind of stuff understands how much of a toll it takes on your body. And for those of you who have not worked those, sorts of hours. If you do any amount of research on the general health of people who work those sorts of hours, it's the data is not good. So the idea that that you can easily just kind of adjust, just get up a few hours early, things like that, it's not the reality. And so it's important that we understand that. And then to compound that, there are some people who will, you know, they'll work these late hours and then on the other days, you know, they might try to live by a more normal schedule, but adjusting back and forth can be really, really exhausting and unhealthy. I don't know if you've tried to do that. And in my case, what I did was to avoid having to do that adjustment, I just maintained on my days off the same kind of sleep schedule right. and everything. And that can kind of make for um, having issues with your with personal stuff and things like that, like trying to just even get stuff done around your own house. Yeah, I mean, when you're doing, when you're mowing the lawn at 6 a.m. <laughs> and then taking a shower and going to sleep, that's just a very odd feeling. I'm sure. I'm sure. Now, you had mentioned to me in your email that at one point you would even turn down a promotion because it was going to lead to even less opportunity to train. Yes. Um, the, the school I was going to had only two classes for you, for us to attend. And those were evening classes. And on those days, when you get a promotion at my current, at my job, you have, it is required to work a closing shift that night. So I wouldn't be getting off. The class would be at 6 p.m. I wouldn't be getting off until 11 p.m. or midnight on those days. So it would just completely eliminate me being able to go train. Mm. And uh, I, I went to a, a small school. It was actually one that was held at a community center. So it's they didn't have the opportunity to have like some schools do, you can have morning classes, day classes, multiple days of the week. So at one point, yeah, I, I had actually turned down an opportunity to advance in my career to keep up my martial arts training. How did and that feel? That, that, that wasn't an easy decision. I had to discuss it with my wife. Um, and as any of your listeners who are married, they know that is always the first step you do. You, you always discuss it with your spouse. Should be anyway. And it, it really should be. Um, 
And I, I, I don't always prescribe to the happy wife, happy life concept. Me and my wife go with happy spouse, happy house. Mm-hmm. So a lot of the decisions we 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 go, obviously go into together, but I discussed it with her. And luckily for me, I have an amazingly supportive wife. And she's actually the one who helped me find the, the Taekwondo school I went to because she knew I wanted to get back into martial arts because I had taken time off. But I had to I had to sit down and talk with her and say, look, I, at this moment, martial arts is one of my main focuses. I know I have the opportunity to go for this position, but what would you think of me passing it up to continue with my martial arts? And luckily, she was very supportive of that. I'm contemplating. Just gonna make a note mm-hmm. how we're gonna make a transition here. Right. Yeah, I thought I was hoping. We, glad we didn't lose signal no, or anything. No, we're good. <laughs> we're good. All right, coming back in three, two. All right. Now you had brought up what really at, at the same time is just a different way of looking at the same question of reconciling work with your training, and and this other aspect might be a little more relatable to some of our listeners. So could you you talk about that for a moment? Yeah, the other aspect I I mentioned was the physical toll that martial arts can take on on your body in the aspect of anyone who's done martial arts for uh, at least, let's say at least six months, knows that you're going to get hurt occasionally. You're going to get, especially if you do if you spar or do in karate, do kumite or anything like that, you will, you are going to get hit. You're going to be in some sort of pain. And there had been times uh, that I had to call off of work because I just physically couldn't do it that day because I was in pain from uh, the worst one was from the, my, on my right side from my right ankle all the way up to the top of my head on my right side was just beat. I had bruises on my ribs and all that. It was just, you, you run into the issue of, is my martial arts physically allowing me to work yeah. and having to kind of weigh those against each other too. And this is certainly a challenge that, I'm going to guess most of the listeners have experienced. Now, if you work a physical job, you know, something that requires you to be, you know, in a certain mm-hmm. physical level with your body, this can be huge. You know, if you can't stand all day, if you can't pick up the heavy objects, if you're, you know, if you have some kind of pull or strain in, in a muscle, it, it can mean that you just physically cannot do your job. And for others who maybe work more of a desk style job, showing up with a black eye doesn't look good. You know, especially if you're someone who is facing customers, if you're interacting with customers, people that are paying you for your services. Imagine going out to eat and seeing, you know, big scrapes or claw marks or, you know, a couple black eyes on your server. That's not going to inspire confidence in the quality of the food, even though the two have nothing to do with each other. Yeah, it's a very judging a book or a situation by just a glance. Um, the the best way I can look at it is uh, one of my favorite movies that kind of really shows this is uh, that, the movie G.I. Jane with uh, Demi Moore. There's a scene where she just finished brutal training and she's in a lady's room. And one of the other patrons just looks at her and says, "If it, in my opinion, I'd say leave the guy not knowing what the context of where all that came from. And that really, as a martial artist, kind of kind of spoke to me in the fact that, you, like you said, if you work at, like, if you work at McDonald's or something and you go up to the front and you go up to the register and you have two black eyes or something, that's not going to be a good appearance right. um, for, the, uh, for the customer. So let's, I, I think we've set up the problem you know, if we want to call it that, the challenge well enough. Let's start talking about some of the answers, some of the options. And of course, you've kind of, whether it was intentional or not, you've solved part of it for yourself in that 
you've changed your hours. Now, not every mm-hmm. job is going to give you the, the option of working a different shift. Sometimes you do. Sometimes, if you've got that really variable schedule, you know, I, I would say that I don't know of too many jobs where, you know, it's, it can be any given time, any given day, you know, Sunday through mm-hmm. Saturday, you know, certainly the military offers yeah. some opportunities like that. Uh, but I think at the end of the day, no matter what job you're working, if you're not able to do anything that you want to do, if there's something that's really important to you, like martial arts, and you don't have the ability to even carve out a little bit of fixed space to have that, I think you need to look really long and hard at the the job itself. Is the job worth that sacrifice? Because that's a pretty substantial sacrifice. And I'm sure that, you know, if we're talking about a job like that, it's not just martial arts that's suffering. It's a social life. It's, Mm -hmm. you know, if if you're a single person and you're looking to date and maybe find a partner, that's going to become limiting. Being out mm-hmm. mowing the lawn yeah. at 6 a.m. I mean, these these are things that most of us aren't going to want to engage in. So I think a, a, the first step is looking long and hard. Is this job a job that is going to satisfy all of my needs or just the financial needs? Mm-hmm. Did you have that conversation and, with yourself at some point? Um, I I did, and what I ca- I came to the uh, conclusion on was I I absolutely love doing martial arts but I had to weigh the financial well-being of me and my spouse so unfortunately I had made the decision but I I got it was kind of a how would I put this it's kind of two-pronged I had made what I thought was a decision that unfortunately meant I was going to have to give up martial arts I actually went for a promotion and I didn't get the promotion, but that going for that promotion allowed me to be put in another position where I could still do martial arts, mm. but get a diff, get more skill sets. So it was it was a very interesting kind of situation there. I, I had resigned myself that okay, I'm going to have to put off my martial arts training. And it's not a fun decision to have to make you know, yeah. for anyone who's been who's listened, who has had to put their martial arts on the back burner, more or less. I'd already done that once when I was in high school and having to do it again was kind of a hard, hard pill to swallow. But I had to make that decision. And it, it did take some reflection. It did take a lot of inner thought and also again conversations with my wife to make the decision and ultimately she had said that whatever decision i make will be she will support and that was really the the crux of it was um because she knew how happy martial arts makes me right i i absolutely love it i i love going to uh the the dojang when doing taekwondo and just working out with the people the camaraderie the uh, the skill sets you learn and everything there but she also knew that my career is important to me i'm very driven person the day i graduated high school my grandfather told me that you have a high school diploma so you can do anything from digging a ditch to running a bank but no matter what you do you do it your absolute best and so even though I don't work in what would be considered a high powered or glamorous job, I give it my absolute best. Right. And so that was really where I was, I, I made the decision and I'm like, okay, I, I got to do this. I, I Martial arts is a big part of my life, but I was able to come back to it before it never went away for me. So I I went for that promotion and then like I said I didn't get it but they said we will we can move you to another spot you'll have more conventional hours and it'll give you an opportunity down the line for possible advancement so Great. that 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 
that choice is still not gone because I do have the opportunity in oh down the line to go up. Mm -hmm. So it's trying to it's still a matter of reconciling that. Okay. Now the the next step, the next thing I guess I would I would ask, you know, if, if you had kind of gotten stuck with these hours that you, you couldn't train, mm -hmm. it would have been is there a school that you can change to? Right? Because not every school has classes two days a week. Some schools have classes six or seven days a week. Some schools have classes, if you're in a large enough area, they offer classes through the day. I've seen schools with morning classes and noon classes, early. Oh, the, the first later. martial arts school I went to had, you had classes starting at 8 a.m. and going all the way to 7 p.m. at night. Mm. The only issue was the, and you, you had discussed this before uh, a few episodes back, I believe, or it was further back, I remember the conversation you had on the cost of martial arts, the financial. And that was really the thing, was trying to find another school in the area that I could afford. Mm. So that was the thing that got me with, the, with doing the Taekwondo. Like I said, it was held at an adult center. So it was far less expensive to do. It was I was paying less than $30 a month. Okay. Whereas most conventional schools, whether it be a karate school, because we do have a few uh, schools in my area, it's just most of them start at about ninety dollars to a hundred and something a month. Yep. So it was just a matter of, well, I would have to put it off for a little bit and then possibly find a school that I could once you know getting promoted generally comes with a pay increase. Yep. I could eventually afford. Once we've, you know, managed our, our finances. Yep. I guess the next, the next piece would be, what can you do on your own? So let's say you're at a school that, you know, it's the two days a week and once in a while you can make it with your hours, but not reliably, not consistently, which kind of describes mm -hmm. my relationship with Taekwondo right now. I'm not able to attend often, mm -hmm. but I still train on my own. And I still mm -hmm. do so in order to maximize the time I have when I do get to make it to class. Mm -hmm. And depending on the school that you're at, the instructor may give you, let's call it homework. Mm -hmm. They might even, de depending on who it is, more and more martial arts instructors are getting comfortable videoing what's going on with class. You may have someone who's quite willing to do that and would video, maybe even live stream, the classes they have it going on and you can watch and kind of play along later. Yeah. Well, with uh, the, the Taekwondo, I, I, I don't know which specific type you do. I, I do ITF Taekwondo, but what's really good about my school is they actually, when you sign up, you get a book, you get the, uh, it's our GUP book and it goes over everything, not like break down class by class, but it breaks down everything you're going to need to learn physically. And with our school, you also do a written test. So not just physically, but the, the required knowledge. So when I wasn't able to attend class, I could at least go to my book and practice uh, what I know out of there. The only issue that I came up with with practicing at home is if you're doing something wrong and you do something wrong a hundred times, once you go to class, right, they have to break you of that habit, right? So, and um, my suggestion when people I, are training at home, and, and I, I recognize I'm, I'm jumping in on you here, um, but I'm going to keep going anyway because <laughs> it's my show and I get to do that. Uh, that is your show. You got the run of it. <laughs> When, when I train at home, the way I recommend if somebody's going to train on their own, you should be working on very, very specific things. And they should be things that you are very aware of how you need to adjust them. So for example, mm -hmm. if I'm tr working on making a particular kick higher, or I'm working on the mm -hmm. balance for a kick, or I'm working on conditioning, things like that. These are all things where the it's pretty clear whether or not I'm progressing and whether or not I am making progress in the right way. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's one of those, it's very black and white 
you can feel when you throw a kick wrong. Um, you you can feel it if you you're you're not positioning yourself right, everything like that. And I, I agree with you. Make sure you have something that you can catch yourself on. Am I doing this right? Am I doing this wrong? That's one of the things I love about doing uh, patterns is you know if you're doing it right or wrong because you know it is a set uh, set of it's a set of moves. Yep. And I, I, I still, I love doing patterns. I really do. I, I, I look at it myself as a, a form of what I call active meditation. I just have something to focus on. But like you said, I, I, it is a great idea to just hone in on something like, okay, I'm not able to make it to class tonight. I need to work on my, my balance for my side piercing kick because I keep falling over when I throw it. Right. Or things like that. I need to work on my, uh, my positioning of my feet when I'm trying to land from a flying technique or something like that. And I, I think that is a really, really good piece of advice that you have there. And of course, you can get your instructor's input on this. And if you are someone mm -hmm. who, you know, you have a, a varied schedule and your schedule comes out and you look and say, ah, I can only make it to class you know, this day, but not this day, or maybe even no days that week. And maybe, maybe it has nothing to do with work. Maybe it just has to do with life getting in the way for this particular week or heck more. I strongly suggest that you schedule in the time that you're going to train, even if that's 10 minutes. Scheduling mm -hmm. in 10 minutes and, and making sure that you're doing it, planning it, putting it on the calendar and giving it that priority, you are more likely to do it and respect it and get something out of it than if you say, oh, um, if I can get 10 minutes later, I'll train. Mm -hmm. There's always something that's going to come up. Yeah, you, you, or you can, you can create your own distractions. Right. Like, I, 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 you could say, like, oh, I'm going to train. Ooh, there's a, a movie marathon on or something like that. So, and I, I agree with if you put it down, especially in the age of smartphones. We can put a reminder in your phone, set the loudest, most obnoxious alarm you can so you can't help but notice it going off. Absolutely. <laughs> and then, you know, the, the last option, I think, and, and you, you said this, what do you have to do to bridge the gap to get to where you can train the way you want to train again? Does that mean that you have to temporarily take a different role? Because one of the things that I find myself saying often lately to people that are, are talking to me, martial arts is always there for you. It's there for you when you are ready to go back or able to go back, whether it's time or, or money or, or just life getting in the way. Martial arts is there. And if you're someone who doesn't do well with training on your own, like me, I do not do well training on my own. I do some of it, but I know that I need the structure of a class. And Right now, I'm not training as much as I would like to because I'm involved in other things like building whistle kick that distract mm -hmm. me, that pull me away. But I know that it's not permanent. It's temporary. And at some point, when I can start training two, three, five days a week as I would love to, martial arts will be there for me when, when I'm ready. And what's really nice about martial arts is the way to look at it is Martial arts would be, it's not going to get upset with you for not going. Mm. Other people might, but it'll always, like you said, it will always be there for you. Right. You can take a week off, a month off, six months off, or in my case, I didn't do martial arts for almost 10 years wow. or more. I, I, I did martial arts as a freshman in high school. And unfortunately, again, it came down to finances. We just couldn't afford for me and my brother to continue. And I grew up in San Diego, California, where a lot of things are expensive mm. there. And we, we looked around. We tried to find a more cost-effective school. And unfortunately, we weren't able to. So I didn't do martial arts. I didn't get back into martial arts until, let's see, uh, two years ago. And I'm uh, 27 years old, so that was a fairly large gap. Yeah, it's a long time. There, there, there's a whole gap of a high school student in there, right. somebody who could be born the day I stopped doing martial arts in high school and then 
be in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now let's let's talk about the other side of this. Let's talk about the physical side mm-hmm. because we we brought up the problem, the challenge of how you reconcile those two, having a physically demanding job or even just bringing the physical aspects of life into your job with with mm-hmm. training. And of course, we've had plenty of people on the show who have talked about what a lot of people call the blood and guts or the golden era of martial arts mm-hmm. in the 70s where you know there wasn't sparring gear and people were beating the tar out of each other. Yeah, like the uh, interview with Bill Wallace where he uh, was talking about where he kicked somebody and when they opened up their uniform, you could see their footprint yeah. or his footprint on them. That's one of my favorite <laughs> stories. I've heard it on um, on your show, and I've heard it other, uh, elsewhere. Yeah, I believe Great that's story. one of my favorite stories. I, 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 that's one of my favorite shows is uh, uh, the Superfoot Wallace episode. Oh, cool. Um, no, and yeah, like you said, the blood and guts era of it. Whereas, if you're not bleeding, you're not training, kind of mentality. Right. And there are some schools that have that attitude now. But I'm going to be honest. I don't think that's a good place to train. Now, if it's what you want, by all means, I'm not telling you you shouldn't train there. But most of us, as evidenced by the fact that this episode even exists, and if you're listening, you're still listening, (laughs) have to balance work and training or life and training, depending on how you're looking at it. And we need that opportunity to find a way, even within our job, to you know, hopefully carve out some variability uh, for balance for our training and do the same thing within our training. Now, I've had times where I've been, you know, I've, I've needed my body for things and said mm-hmm. to the people that I'm training with, hey, I need to dial it back today. I need to go do X, Y, Z tomorrow or this weekend or whatever. And I want to train, but I don't want to take the risk. And some people might look at that and say, well, you know, you're doing your training a disservice or yeah, absolutely. Because Mm -hmm. we're talking about balance. And I've even actually had the uh, exact opposite situation where I have been at work and I've been like, hey, I need to take it easy at work because I actually do have a fairly physically demanding job and because I had a tournament the next day. So I was. Like, hey, I need to t- kind of dial it back tonight. So when I go to my tournament the next day, I'm fresh. I'm good. I'm not trying to fight a back strain or something like that. And like you said, it, I, I feel like I was doing my job a disservice. But like you, like we've been saying, the 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 whole crux of this episode, not or not the crux, but the whole underlying theme that I've been kind of paying attention to is balance. We have to have that balance. And you, like you said, you, you, you've, uh, we've all done it. Probably we've done our training a, what people consider a disservice by going lighter in training because you had something personal, uh, the next day. And then I've done, and I'm sure other people have done, they've gone lighter at their job because they have a martial arts thing the next day. So it's, it's very much like you've been, like you've been saying as, a balance trying to find that good uh that good spot right in the middle the 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 traditional martial arts idea or of yin yang you have to have that and i think the key is communication it's communicating Mm -hmm. with yourself to understand what your physical needs are in and outside Mm -hmm. of training it's communicating with your instructor to let them know what your expectations are and what your needs are and i'll be honest if they're not willing to accommodate that, it's probably a sign they're not willing to accommodate you. Mm-hmm. Maybe you need to look for another place to train. And then it's communication with your training partners to make sure that they know mm-hmm. the parameters, the boundaries that you're setting for how they're working with you and what you're going to be willing and able to do. And hopefully you're not mm-hmm. dialing it back every class because if you are, it's a sign that either you're not pushing yourself or you've got yourself mm. in a situation that is not sustainable and you should be looking for a way to change it. Mm-hmm. And Yeah, because you know. if you're dialing it back every class, then mediocrity becomes your norm. And I've heard you say, and I've heard other people say with martial arts, 
you don't want to you want to be above the mediocre you want to be above the mediocrity we are trying to be the best versions of ourselves and dialing it back once in a while is needed but if you're like you said constantly having to dial it back you have to kind of take a moment and be saying to yourself why am i doing this because i feel martial arts is too demanding for me or even is this style too demanding because i've known people who went from doing kung fu and it was just too much on their body and they went to tai chi Mm. and much more much easier on your body and and again it it goes back to the balance you got to have that balance but if you're doing the like you said if you're dialing it back every class then you well and truly are doing yourself a disservice. Yeah. So let's sum this up because I think we've got mm-hmm. some good advice now for people. We're talking about balance. I think that's the word we've probably used more than any other as we've talked. It's almost like we're getting paid for every time yeah. we use the word balance. <laughs> uh, it's communication. Mm-hmm. And what, what else? And it's, it's a, I, I think it's a willingness to change whether that's how about we call it more of a willingness to adapt there you go even a, kind even a of better the, way to express it i love it the adapt the, the willingness to adapt the uh the um uh, old military expression improvise adapt overcome is a good way to look at that in my opinion right. all right is there anything else that we want to leave the listeners with before we wrap up um just uh if you're in the position that i've been in um especially if you're having to if your livelihood is not just your own but you have a wife a husband kids anyone you're taking care of and you're going to make one of these decisions it i i implore you communicate like we said but communicate with your family communicate with your other half um or if it's just yourself on your own really have that introspective moment take the time you don't have to do one of those pro con lists because i I, i've come to realize you're always going to have more on the con section than in the pro but have that moment have that time to make the informed make the decision that is the best for you and and don't let other people tell you what is the best for you only you can do that and i know that seems to oppose the the concept of talking it over with your family but ideally if you have to talk it over with your family they are on board with whatever decision you make and they will support you and i think that's one of the things you got to look at is make sure you really take that long look in the mirror and decide what is important and for some people you have to like i I put like i said have to put off martial arts other times it could be more beneficial to yourself and your own well-being not so much financially but just you as a person to make that decision to make martial arts your number one and that's that's just what i i kind of want to give to the listeners I thought we had a great conversation and I thought we ended up with some good advice, some good thoughts, and I hope that you got something out of it. I want to thank Mr. Audie for coming on the show, for being so kind and hospitable to me figuring out this sort of new format that honestly I liked and I would like to do more of. If you have a question that you'd like to ask me on air, go ahead, send me an email, jeremy at whistlekick.com. And of course you can find everything we've got going on at whistlekick.com. Don't forget the code podcast 15 whistlekickmarshwartsradio.com is the place for the transcript, photos, links, signing up for the newsletter, and a whole bunch more. If you're willing to help us out, there are a lot of ways you can do that. Everything from making a purchase to sharing an episode to leaving a review on Apple Podcasts or Stitcher or wherever works for you. All of our social media is at Whistlekick, whether that's Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram. I already told you my email address. I'm running down a list if you can't tell. (laughs) I hope you Have the best of days. And until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.